Welcome to Let's Recap. We'll be discussing everything you need to know before watching Netflix's Fate, the Winx Saga, Season 2. We open on Afia, a magical school for fairies and specialists, which exists in the Solaria region of the Otherworld. Earth is the first world, and that is where we find our main character, Bloom. Bloom is born to human parents who think she is going to an elite private school, and not a school for fairies with magical powers. Bloom desperately wants to learn how to control her powers after burning down her childhood home. Upon arriving at Alfia, we are introduced to Bloom's sweetmates. Each of the fairies at the school is innately connected to some physical or mental element. Aisha is able to control water. Beatrix is able to control wind and electricity. Tiara is able to control plants and soil. Musa is an empath, and she's able to connect with other people's feelings. Stella is the daughter of the Queen of Light, and she's also able to control light. Bloom also meets Sky, a specialist who is instantly drawn to her. Sky's best friend, Riven, is another specialist who is an underachiever with an inferiority complex towards Sky. And Dane is a first year specialist. As this is the school full of teenagers, there's quite a few romantic entanglements. Tiara likes Dane, but Dane likes Riven. Riven likes Beatrix, and Beatrix tolerates him. Sky likes Bloom, and Stella hates this because Sky and her used to be a thing. Bloom likes Sky she is hesitant, and Musa and Sam each mutually like each other and are constantly sneaking off to make out. This seemingly idyllic school with its English countryside-esque setting has a problem. Burnt ones are starting to appear after not being seen in over 16 years. Burnt ones are zombie-type creatures with immense strength and speed. If one of them scratches you, you will eventually turn into a burnt one, unless the one that scratched you is killed. Currently, the grounds of the school are protected by a force field powered by the Stone Circle Energy Conduit. While out on a patrol, Silva, the teacher in charge of the specialists, and a group of men are slaughtered by a burnt one. Silva manages to survive, but he's badly injured. Professor Harvey, Tierra's dad, manages to keep the infection at bay with Zambic oil, but time is short and they need to find the burnt one. All the school's administrators are now distracted by the burnt one, including Farrah Dowing, the headmistress of the school and the most powerful fairy. Using this distraction, Beatrix is able to sneak into Dowling's office, and she's looking for something mysterious. Beatrix, at this point, seems like a little bit of a snarky troublemaker. It's difficult to know if she's just a moody teen or if she's a bad guy. But when she murders her compatriot Callum in cold blood, we can be pretty sure she's a bad guy. We find out that Beatrix is really looking for Rosalind, who is being held in the undercroft beneath Dowling's office. Bloom is learning how to control her magic, but she is presented with the fact that she is a changeling, which means she was switched at birth with a human baby. So she's not a human after all, and her parents aren't who we thought they were. Bloom is now consumed with learning who her real parents are, and Beatrix uses this fact to get Bloom to help her free Rosalind. The tipping point comes after Beatrix takes Bloom to the ruins of Astrodel. The city was destroyed by magic because burnt ones resided there. Everything was wiped out, even the city's innocent residents, says Beatrix. So maybe Beatrix isn't the bad guy. Armed with this knowledge, Bloom now believes that Downing, Silva, and Harvey have been lying to her, and they are the real bad guys. Bloom also receives images of Rosalind, dropping her off as a baby, so she must know something about her parents. Bloom frees Rosalind, and Rosalind takes her to the Stone Circle, so she can recharge her powers. Rosalind reveals that, in fact, she was the one who destroyed Astra Dell, but she did it not only because there were burnt ones there, but because Blood Witches also lived there. The series doesn't really explain what Blood Witches are, but everyone seems to agree they are bad. And with a name like Blood Witches... I'm guessing they aren't humanitarians. While recharging her powers, Rosalind leaves the school defenseless because the school draws on the power of the stone circle to provide power for the force field and the facility's lighting. The burnt ones begin to enter the school and they attack Sam, Tiara's brother. They aren't really interested in anyone but Bloom and they want to kill Bloom because she is the most powerful fairy and poses the biggest threat to them. Bloom goes out into an open field outside of the school and is surrounded by burnt ones. It looks as if she's in trouble but then she goes full fairy mode, raises up like Dark Phoenix from the X-Men, and destroys all the burnt ones pretty easily. Everything seems good now. Bloom and Sky had their long-awaited kiss, and the burnt ones are all gone. At this point, Bloom and her sweetmates decide to go back and visit Bloom's parents and tell them who she really is. But everything is not good when they get back. Queen Luna arrests Silva for the attempted murder of Andreas, Sky's thought-to-be-dead father. Turns out he's been raising Beatrix all these years in hiding, Rosalind also kills Downey and buries her next to the burnt ones that Bloom killed. So 
So at this point, it's looking like Beatrix is definitely a bad guy. And we shouldn't have given her the benefit of the doubt after the Astrodel trip. Not only is she a bad guy, but Andreas, Rosalind, and Queen Luna all look pretty bad as well. At the very least, they're morally compromised. When Bloom and her group return to Alfia, they see that Rosalind and Andreas are now running the school. So there's going to be a completely new dynamic in Season 2.